Remember to smile. If he asks about the economy, tell, tell him. the story about the bison who got drunk eating fermented apples. I got it. Five minutes, Congresswoman. Thank you. What's going on over here? <clears throat> Nothing. How are you feeling? Like my campaign manager is hiding something from me. Congresswoman, your head's in the game. I don't want to take it out. Whatever it is, I can handle it. The woman in the resting camp leaked it to us. On the other side of this door sit the leaders of Syria, China, and Iran. On the other side of this door is America's future, success and failure, life and death. Does America really want an inexperienced hand opening this door? Listen, I know it's insulting. I know it's sexist and way below the belt, and we'll deal with this later, but right now, you have to focus on this interview, so take a minute. Whatever you need. I'm fine. Josie? I'm fine. Josephine Marcus, war widow, first-term congresswoman, presidential hopeful. Tonight on Top of the Hour, Congresswoman Marcus sits down with James Novak for her first primetime interview since becoming the breakout star of this year's Democratic primaries. Is this a real-life Cinderella story or a political lightweight squeaking by on her down-home charm? You decide on Top of the Hour. Three, two, Congresswoman Marcus, thanks for joining us. Or I should say, thank you for inviting me into your lovely home. My pleasure. Let's get right to it. The wrestling campaign says that you lack the experience to be president of the United States. What, what's your response to that? Congresswoman Marcus? Mm-hmm. Um, there's something my grandmother used to do whenever I'd start dating someone. I would tell her his name, and then she would say, oh, what part of town does he live in? That was her way of asking if my boyfriend was white. Oh yeah, my grandmother was an out and out racist. So I know what prejudice looks like. It's not about experience, James, it's about gender. Reston's saying, I don't have the balls to be president, and he means that literally. It's offensive. It's offensive to me and to all the women whose votes he's asking for. Uh, I'm sorry, are you, are you saying that Governor Reston is sexist? Yes, yes I am. What the hell is she doing? And it's not just Governor Reston speaking in code about gender. It's everyone, yourself included. Excuse me? The only reason we're doing this interview in my house is because you requested it. This was your idea, and yet here you are thanking me for inviting you into my lovely home. That's what you say to the neighbor lady who baked you chocolate chip cookies. This pitcher of iced tea isn't even mine. It's what your producer set here. Why? Same reason you called me a real-life Cinderella story. It reminds people that I'm a woman without using the word. For you, it's an angle. I get that. And I'm sure you think it's innocuous, but guess what? It's not. Congresswoman Marcus. Don't interrupt me when I'm speaking. I Sorry. have to stop this. Don't you dare. You're promoting stereotypes, James. You're advancing this idea that women are weaker than men. You're playing right into the hands of Reston and into the hands of every other imbecile who thinks a woman isn't fit to be commander in chief. Yes, Governor, I'm talking about you. Seven years I served in the United States Army, which is seven more years than Governor Reston ever served. A fact you conveniently omitted from my intro. How about soldier, lieutenant? Yeah, I, that was an oversight. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Football. 